Hello class, I'm Mr. Sutton, and today we're going to be talking about proving parallelograms. So similar to what we did with proving triangles, now we're doing proving parallelograms. Now there are five different ways that we can prove a quadrilateral is a parallelogram, and these are the five ways, and this is exactly how they are written in Delta Math. We have two pairs of opposite sides parallel, two pairs of opposite sides congruent, one pair of opposite sides parallel and congruent, both pairs of opposite angles congruent, diagonals that bisect each other. Those are the five. Now it's important to know what the five are because when you're on delta math and you're on the step where you're trying to prove a quadrilateral is a parallelogram, when you go to the reason, it has all possible reasons for proving a quadrilateral is any kind of shape. Uh, so it has a lot of reasons that aren't gonna work for parallelograms. So we wanna know for sure which five work for parallelograms so that would be two pairs of opposite sides parallel two pairs of opposite sides congruent one pair of opposite sides parallel and congruent and then both pairs of opposite angles congruent and diagonals that bisect each other so those are the five so you want to make sure you have these down in your notes and i'm also going to go through what these would look like visually so first two pairs of opposite sides parallel so that would mean this side is parallel to this side and this side is parallel to this side this is pretty much what the definition of a parallelogram is so this one should be somewhat obvious so make sure you have this in your notes as well two pairs of opposite sides congruent that means this side is congruent to this side and this side is congruent to this side so that's what this would look like make sure you have this in your notes one pair of opposite sides congruent and parallel so it has to be the same pair so in this case, this side is congruent and parallel to this side. Both pairs of opposite angles congruent. So this angle is congruent to this angle, this angle is congruent to this angle. And diagonals bisect each other, meaning they cut each other exactly in half. So that means this half has to be congruent to this half, and this half has to be congruent to this half. Now, I kind of rushed through that because I do want to spend most of this video going through some proof examples with y'all. So it is important to have all of that written down so that you can reference it when you're working on these proofs. So make sure you do that. I'm going to go ahead and start going through some examples on Delta Math of proving some figure is a parallelogram. All right, for this one, I uh, what we're given is that A, B, E is congruent to triangle CDE. So we have two congruent triangles and I am seeing uh, two pathways to proving this one. I'm gonna start with the one that I think is easier and that is gonna be, that I'm gonna prove first that BE is congruent to DE uh, because these are corresponding parts of congruent triangles. And then I'm gonna prove that AE is congruent to CE which are also corresponding parts of congruent triangles and Hopefully you see where I'm going with this. Once I prove that these are congruent to each other, then that means that they are bisecting each other, which would mean we have diagonals bisecting each other, which is one of our ways to prove this is a parallelogram. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. So I went ahead and said that these parts are, cor are corresponding to each other, meaning they're congruent because we have these two congruent triangles. The next step is important. You might think, okay, we did it. We're ready to say that these are, this is a parallelogram because we have the diagonals bisecting each other. We have one more step actually. Um, just because we said these parts are congruent doesn't automatically mean we know that they're bisecting each other. We have to also say they are bisecting each other next. So I'm going to do that now. I'm going to say that AC bisects BD. And a reason is a segment bisector intersects um, the segment to form two congruent segments. And then we're going to also say the other way. We got to say that they're both bisecting each other. So BD bisects AC for the same reason. Now that we've said they're both bisectors, we can say that it is a parallelogram. So classify a quadrilateral, A, B, C, D is quadrilateral because 
we have diagonals that bisect each other. There it is. All right. The other method that I was thinking about that you could have used for this one is, again, using the fact that these are both triangles, we could have said that these sides, uh, okay, I can draw here. Okay, we could have said that these sides are congruent because of the corresponding parts of the congruent triangles. We could have said that these angles are congruent because of corresponding parts of congruent triangles, which now we have alternate interior angles congruent with two lines cut by a transversal, which would mean that these two lines are parallel. So if they're congruent and parallel, that's another pathway of proving that this is a parallelogram. So that's another thing you could have done for this one. So I saw two pathways for this. There possibly could have been more. Saying that these two triangles are congruent gives us a lot of information because of all those corresponding parts. So there you go. But make sure you have this proof written down. If you And if you can come up with what the other proof that I talked about looked like, write that one down as well. Uh, as a formal proof, but let's go ahead and find a new problem. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at this one. This one seems kind of complicated, but I think I have a good idea on how to do this. That's actually similar to the last one we talked about. So once again, we have two triangles congruent, which gives us a lot of information because of the corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. And then we have these two little segments congruent to each other. So what I want to do is I want to use the fact that these two triangles are congruent to prove that GC is congruent to HA by corresponding parts of congruent triangles. And then I'll have these two segments congruent to each other. Uh, and then you can use segment addition to prove that the larger segments BC is congruent to DA. So that's what I'm going to do. So I went ahead and said GC is congruent to um, HA by corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. And I did that so then I could say that BC is congruent to DA, so the entire line, um, because, let's see, where is it? Uh, congruent segments added to congruent segments form congruent segments. So now we know that those whole lines are congruent to each other, which is good because there's two pathways to proving parallelograms congruent with that. We can either prove that these other sides are congruent now, or we can prove that these sides that we proved are congruent are also parallel. So we have two different things we can think about here. I personally don't see a way that we could prove BA is congruent to DC because we don't know much about this shape right here, right? What we know mostly is that these triangles are congruent, which gives us a lot of information. So I'm going to stick with these sides here. And what I'm thinking about, and this is kind of what I talked about on the last proof, is I know that this angle is going to be congruent to this angle by corresponding parts of congruent triangles. And then I'll have alternate interior angles congruent, where two lines cut by a transversal. So if those angles are congruent, then that means that these lines are parallel. So that's what... I'm thinking about that's what I'm going to do to try to finish out this proof. So I said HAF is congruent to angle GCE. Again, by corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. Remember, we have those triangles congruent. So those would be the corresponding parts. So next, I want to say, so next, I want to say DA is parallel to BC because uh, if two lines cut by a transversal, form congruent alternate interior angles, then the two lines are parallel. So remember, these are alternate interior angles. They're interior because they're between the two lines, and they're alternate because they're on different sides of this transversal line. The transversal line would be AC in this case. So now I have that BC is congruent and parallel to AD, so that is enough to prove that this is a parallelogram. So I'm going to do classify a quadrilateral, and we want to say A, B, C, D is quadrilateral because we have uh, one pair of opposite sides parallel and congruent. There it is. And we got the green check. 
So this one is good to go. All right, Let's see if we can fit in one more. All right, in this one we're given DA is congruent to AB. These two triangles are congruent. DEA is congruent to triangle DFC. And we have these two angles congruent. DAB is congruent to FDC. So here it seems like we're, we're given quite a bit. I'm seeing one way to prove this, but I feel like there could be others. But I'm going to stick with what I'm seeing right now. And what I'm going to do is my game plan is using these two triangles are congruent. Again, this gives us a lot of information here. Uh, I want to prove that DA, this line, is congruent to DC because those are corresponding parts for those two triangles. And then once I've done that, I can use the transitive property to say that AB is congruent to DC because if AB is congruent to DA, then it must be congruent to DC as well. So then we'll have these two opposite sides congruent. And then the other part that I'm going to do is I'm going to use the fact that I have these angles congruent since these are lines cut by this transversal. These would be corresponding angles and if corresponding angles are congruent then that means these two lines would be parallel. So that is kind of a game plan for this because then I'll have opposite sides um, parallel and congruent. So I'm going to go ahead and start by proving that this line is congruent to this line. So like I said, I, I can I said DA is congruent, DA is congruent to DC by corresponding parts of congruent triangles. Um, so the next thing I want to say is that DC is congruent to AB by the transitive property, uh, just to make sure it's extra clear that I'm saying that these two lines are also congruent. So DC is congruent to AB by the transitive property. So now I have these two opposite sides congruent. And then I want to say they're parallel using these corresponding angles that I have here. Uh, so I already know that those angles are congruent. So I can go ahead and jump to saying DC is parallel to AB. And let's see if two lines cut by a transversal form congruent corresponding angles, then the two lines are parallel. That's what we want. So now we have DC is congruent and parallel to AB. So we can go ahead and classify this quadrilateral as a parallelogram. Parallelogram. Because once again, we have two, uh, one pair of opposite sides, parallel and congruent. Okay, I kind of I messed up there because I had, uh, if you, what I was trying to do was I was trying to say that one pair of opposite sides parallel and congruent, and I got this message saying you're claiming A B C D has already been proven to be a parallelogram in your reason, but that's not the case. I wasn't sure why because we have that they're parallel and that they're congruent, which is the reason we're using what I where I messed up was. I'm saying ABCD is a parallelogram because it is a parallelogram. This should be quadrilateral. So learn from my mistakes and don't make that mistake if you're confused by that. So ABCD is a parallelogram because it is a quadrilateral with one pair of opposite sides, parallel and congruent. So now we should be in good shape. There we go. So if you end up getting some kind of error message like that, make sure you're reading your reasonings carefully like I did and going back and checking, make sure everything you've done up to that point makes sense. So now we got the green check, so we can go ahead and submit. All right, so running up to the 15 minute mark. So that's the last one I'm gonna do here. Make sure you have all of those proofs written down and any tips that I said in those proofs uh, to write down would be helpful so that you can reference those later when you're working on this on your own. If you have any questions, make sure you're asking for help in class and uh, going to office hours. Have a good day.